Good evening, my AKA Patters. Thanks for hanging with me. I wanted to do this at, at uh, 8 o'clock. Couldn't do it. Why? Well, I had more YouTube trouble. Tons of trouble rendering videos. Had to go through everything from the ground up. We I figured it out. The, my current YouTube video that's now live, which is further James Gunn DCU analysis. A little bit of a hot take, even though, you know, I, eh, these, these YouTube videos are getting to me because I do feel like I'm betraying a chunk of myself doing what I consider hot takes, but they grow the channel. People do like them. We're going to keep going with it. We're going to try and roll in more original stuff, more ideas. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you're new here, if you're just joining me, Subscribe, support, leave a comment, drop me something in the chat. And, and what are we drinking tonight? Well, we got our turtle green drank, and uh, we got some coffee too. Just coffee's from earlier. Actually, I'm not sure when, when this coffee's from. Ugh. Oh my God. Okay, I can't drink that. We may have to get some new coffee in a little bit. So, what is this exactly? Here's a little bit of a stack. We recently have been working on for Black History Month, Rise of April O'Neil. Upcoming, we have Cerebus, Biker Mice from Mars, Street Sharks, Rocksteady, previously, Mountie Moose, Raphael, Casey jo Raphael Scarred wearing the Casey Jones mask, Kang. Baxter Stockman. So, you know, like we, we swing for the fences with these. I say swing for the fences because I'm not always, I don't always love the results. I really don't. Uh, and we're doing it live. So, I'm big on doing things live. I'm big on live streaming. The reason, the reason is because when you live stream, you sharpen the blade, you are forced to be way out of your comfort zone. You're, you're just, you think differently, you react differently, you, you do more. And I think it's a big deal. I think if you want to grow as an artist, yeah, live stream. And, you know, you got to commit to it. Today was a, I'm not going to say hellish, but, I don't know. I mean, I delayed doing a little bit of, of real work in favor of doing comic book work. So there's a push and pull with that. Troll Heyman, read. What is up? Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Look, look. Um, I was just kind of talking about that. The, the live streams are about me documenting as much as I can. You know, like it, my whole vision is for people to go to akapad.com and you can search and explore my entire work history. Uh, it's never been done before. I think it's important. And, you know, I just, I don't know. I want to get people uh, ranked up and, and uh, like, I want, I want to make people jealous so that they create more. How about that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a Thursday night live. It is. Yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll be doing more Thursday stuff. Just like, uh, I know we're supposed to be doing January still, but I love, I love doing these so much. And it took me a little bit of some trial and error to get back into the rhythm of doing these. So I want to maintain my momentum for these. And... I don't know. Just like it, I got a, I, I have maybe another fifteen to go, <laughs> but I want to complete my stack. I I want to kind of complete my stack so I can uh, buy and eat more pizzas. It, it really broke my heart last year when I fell out of rhythm of doing these, but. There was so much going on work wise, so much going on with the with the nine to five. Um, you know, like I kind of try and update you guys as much as possible with everything. 
like for example, this stream itself was delayed because uh, I had workout rendering problems with YouTube, uh, mostly within Adobe Premiere Pro. So I try and do a lot. And everyone tells me I try and do too much, but I don't know what that means. I, I hate it when people say that. You know, like I've, I've actually been on, because a lot of my work work is through personal relationships. Like people that find me on social media, uh, word of mouth type stuff. And I've had like it kind of within a professional environment, uh, people tell me that I do too much. And I just, I think that's the most insulting thing because why would you want people to work with you that, that don't do anything? Right? You know, and usually when people, I, I, it's like a little bit, I think when people say that to me, they're, they're looking out for themselves. Like they don't want, someone that, that they don't have full control over to kind of, you know, rattle the cage too much. I feel like that's the story of my life. Yeah, Nina, wait, um, that brush pen, let me see. I think I have one of those. I mean, I'm documented. To, I'm very big on the Pentel brush pens. But which one is this? Is this one of them? Right here. I couldn't, I really couldn't get into a rhythm of using these. Uh, I don't know. It's, I think when it comes to brush, it's, it's the same with these. Like, you know, I spent years developing a feel for uh, practical or, or, or real brushes, we'll say, or brushes, brushes. You know, but the Pentel, I developed a, uh, like, a feel for it. This one, not so much. You know, I, I go back and forth. I've spent, it's like, I feel like I spent time in, in every single one of those arenas, uh, troll. As of right now, I mean, some of the results for January is... Like I'm not joking. We're for January. We're we're blending cheap. Like these are the cheapest markers you can buy. Crayola water based markers, and we're using like all my leftover colored pencils. A lot of them are from Five Below, and we're kind of blending, creating values. That's what I'm into now. But when I first did stuff for the turtles. Uh, it was a sketchbook with Sharpies and these, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, I just did like a GoBot sketchbook uh, last year. Similar feel, similar results. I I like I do like water based uh, markers. I feel like with the right paper, you can do so much with these, and I think they actually help with my speed and they capture a lot of my energy. Uh, colored pencils is more methodical. You know what? I will. I, I read. I'll look those up because I'm always looking at. Maybe if I can get those on Amazon tonight, I'll, I'll go back through the uh, chat because I'm always always looking for new, like endlessly looking for new materials. Like I'm going on the round of trying to find more. Why out pens for different reasons and um, different different pens for different surfaces. Uh, it's that's the big important thing. You have to know your surfaces. So real quick, does is everyone familiar with what we're drawing here? This is the the pizza monster from the original Turtles eighties nineties cartoon show, and these were like xenomorph alien ripoff characters. <laughs> That ate pizza. And uh, I think they just got a bit of a action. They got some action figure love. I, it might be Ser uh, Super 7 or Series 7, whatever that company is called. I believe, uh, or maybe it's NECA. One of them is doing a full line of these, these guys. And I think it's hilarious because uh, it really is weird that... Uh, 
this design never got a uh, like from from the original original line and uh here we'll we'll do a uh, I'll show you guys real quick. Oh, excuse me. TMT Pizza Monster. <laughs> yeah, th there are new toys out. So, here. <laughs> like, how did this not get a toy in the original toy line? Like, do it. Like, just do it. I don't know. I guess, like, I guess why the, that, that is why there is there is a market. Uh, venture like Neo, like there's always a market for something now. Yeah. Um. So look, I just want to show you guys. Um. Reed, that's a great point, dude. Because here's the thing. All right. So th this is how I grew up. This is the. This is how I trained myself. Right. Because I'm self-taught. I No one taught me a lick of anything. Crow Quill and size 3. Size 3 Windsor & Newton is, is everything here. And I'll toggle back and forth on how much brush. Okay? When it comes to the, the line weights themselves. Usually Crow Quill is a little speedier. And it, it I, I can kind of capture the energy. I can capture uh motion okay i always try and do motion even when they're uh static shots but let me show you what like where we what we can do with micron so with microns okay i mimic with microns i mimic what i do with crow quill and the reason for it, i mean hold up here do we have where's my black panther stuff you know, I, I lose artwork like you, you guys wouldn't believe. So, and here's here's some of my Black Panther stuff. So, even with Microns, I, I'm mimicking what I do with the Crow Quill. The reason for that is I kind of can practice back and forth. And, and with the Microns, since I can, I'm so much faster with them because the Crow Quill and the, the Black India ink, I have to do things a certain way so stuff dries so i can kind of like sometimes i'm not really good at moving through the piece but with the microns i get to experiment with uh some of my cross hatching styles and where i'm identifying uh the mass meaning where where's that light where's the shadow single light or double light these are all decisions like you make along the way and the microns help like determine some of that i can kind of um think about it differently and i'm fast so it changes again when i get to the crow quill like the the um that's where your technique and the craftsmanship grows not not the optics technique and craftsmanship is how you handle the materials and I used to hate microns. I used to curse them. I still do. But when I do quick work like this, I grab them. And I think that's a little bit of the uh, fun of it all, right? Like part of the fun of it all is never saying no to anything, keeping an open mind, and, you know, just, again, like keep keep going, keep creating uh, along the way. Uh, take a step back and don't be afraid to evaluate yourself. Don't be afraid to give yourself like like an editor's look, we'll call it. Uh, <laughs> the ed editors of the 70s and 80s of comics, <laughs> okay? The 70s, 80s, and the uh, 2000s, okay? do that don't don't do modern day editors stay run for the hills with that mindset and uh, let me see like we're you guys got me talking i'm already i'm already 15 minutes in but hey anyone joining me for the first time uh thank you so much 
you know, I always appreciate the time that you guys give me. I really do. It is meaningful. It means so much. Uh, I love it. I look forward to it. Uh, you know, like even even with some of these, like some of these, I get no one. Like some of these that I do, no one pops in, and I, I, I it just, I get so depressed. <laughs> I hate it. Just when I'm alone, uh, I could have one person. Uh, hanging out with me, and I, I think, you know, like, it makes me love the internet. Uh, and real quick, right, we got to do some promotion. Uh, we got some new videos, guys. We have James Gunn is Blind, Epic Comic Book Hall. Uh, I, you know, I really, this hall here, uh, I was able to, <laughs> I found some of my own uh, issues at my local comic shop, so that was fun. Quantumania is mid. Uh, Marvel, <laughs> The Marvels, that's the uh, upcoming Brie Larson movie, is dead on arrival. So check those out too. Yeah, you know, Heyman, um, like, I, I thought about that. You know, like, I guess... That's a little bit of like what's a you know, hey man, like let me let me hit the uh my shelf here, here real quick. Let me try and get a good example of something. You know what? We got a great example right here, guys. You are going to like this. Here we go. This is why this is why. I hope you guys are watching. This is why we have a library, okay? This is why you spend the time and you build a library. Let's talk heavy hand. Let's discuss it. These uh, black and white noir books are cheap, and they're they're some of the most valuable things you can buy. If you treat them well, meaning not all of your drawing answers are in this stack, but you can, if you dig hard enough, you study hard enough, you can, you, you can find correlations, you can connect some dots. So let's connect the dots with, with Payman's comment here. We can say Jim Lee and Scott Williams, no heavy hand. We can say slow and steady hand. We can say... Uh, like no pulse almost like it's 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 just exact and perfect right I mean I think we can all agree on that we can all agree that the line work of Jim Lee and Scott Williams is perfect but then let's get into uh honest to God what I consider to be uh second greatest comic book anything of all time uh, we all know I'm, I'm big on Watchmen. It, it, to me, it, it is Dark Knight Returns. Uh, then we have Mouse. Uh, you know, um, maybe the uh, the original Turtle issues is, is number four. But then we get we get Frank Miller, and we kind of forget that Claus Jansen, okay, is coming in to go over the pencils. And we get something different here, right? I mean, look at that chunkiness. We get something different. We get, uh, dare I say, a heavy hand. I mean, I, what's the word I'm looking for for Claus Jansen's line completion here? Uh, I, like, stigmatic? It's incomplete? It's maybe, like, Thick in wrong areas and thin in others. Uh, look, things are great for all kinds of reasons, and things are imperfect for all kinds of reasons. This is as imperfect as you can imagine. It, some of the line work makes no sense at all. It really doesn't, but it's fat and chunky and heavy. And then here we go. We got uh, our crumb. So I recommend volumes three and four 
Uh, I believe these are going back in print soon. They kind of been jumping a little bit on Amazon. This is his sweet spot. Uh, people have obsessively like I think there's six or eight volumes. They buy them all. The one, the later volumes uh, at S U C K. These volumes are incredible. But we can kind of see a combination here of chunkiness, heavy, and exact. And his material, his his material choice is a rapidograph. Uh, you see that in the Chrome documentary. So we we have a little bit of, of a middle ground here, right? A little bit of a middle ground. But then we have this. And speaking of the turtles, it is Turtle Soup Thursday. We have Kevin Eastman here. Pretty, I mean, he's so much like Claus Jameson. He's not like Frank Miller. Eastman, without Laird, is is way closer to Claus Jameson than Frank Miller. So, what I'm getting at, though, okay, is uh, you can be heavy. You can be heavy all you want. You can be what what you have to do, though. Is you kind of have to fight to find, and you know, you can go through a lot of my feats. A lot of it's the uh, Harry Penn work. Uh, Harry Penn was a prod, was a book that we did live, and I've been trying to find the right style for that book for uh, well over a year now. But you kind of see. Here too, where it's just you know it's more heavy, it's not exact, uh, and it's it to me it's very loose. It's just loose, like it's not. Uh, you can kind of say it's not good. Like this isn't good compared to what you would call mainstream comics. The contemporary for this too would be the the Miller Daredevil. Like if you really want to compare it to something, um, the zipper tone saved. This entire effing book. So, if you're heavy, not a problem. I, you know, I, I love it. You know, I love a lot of times too. Like, if you ever want to play an editor, your like your style, like an editor should be able to look at any style. Like an editor should be able to look at this and say, "We have a project for you." This is what you would excel at. Excel at if you're excelling, we're excelling, and we're all happy. That's what an editor does, and that's what I mean when I say wear the editor hat. Yeah, it's it, look. Uh, I say do it all though. Um, brush pens, I think. They're awesome because they're so quick. Uh, you know, like, I don't think you can get any faster than a brush pen. Yeah. Um, I'm always trying to get better with blacks, by the way. I don't think I'm good with blacks at all. I think I'm horrible with them. Uh, I, I still feel like even now I have a lot to learn. And... This is where is it here? Right here. So this is this is one of the books. I actually look from my bookshelf. I just grabbed it. Dynamic lighting shade, Bern Hogarth. Uh, this is like the only thing you need to read. What when it comes to the techniques, the philosophies, the points of view on shading the figure. I do not. I haven't memorized enough of this book, and I, I and I don't reference it enough. And you can see, you can kind of see a little bit of that spine, you know, with that light reflecting off of it. I mean, this book is used. This book is used. Also, R.I.P. Pearl Art Store. I remember buying this, so I was so happy when I found it. So you have to kind of get into Bern Hogarth, by the way. You really do. Uh, I think he's got six books. Dynamic Anatomy, Wrinkles, Light and Shade, 
that's the uh, th those are your top ones. Yeah, same Keith. You know, same Keith is uh, he's another one, and I'm so pissed that with my recent comic hauls, I I, <laughs> I don't have a lot of same Keith outside of a couple Max issues I was able to to dig up. Same Keith is I will always buy any of his. I would say like pre homage comics work or or Oni Press when he's doing OG or Zero Girls or Four Girls. Uh, I think I have Four Girls too. But the point I'm getting at is that there's a period of Saint Keith that I actually do. I have that here. I thought you know I thought I I got a black and white Saint Keith something here. And I'm trying to write, it's something they have aliens. Uh, and I'm drawing a blank. I'll remember as soon as the stream's over. Oh, <laughs> Devil Flyer, what is up, boy? Thanks for joining us, dude. It, this is becoming a hangout session, and I'm not, <laughs> we're not working on our piece too much here. What's wrong with us? But let's. Hail chat, yeah, I know, dude. You got you guys are the absolute best. And keep in mind, we are I'm so heavy of working on the aka pad army, the first or the first book we put together. That's going it's it's a book called Harry Penn. Uh Harry Penn is a chatter that used to come in and uh he's just he would just be awesome. He would just say the most ridiculous stuff. <laughs> and uh his, the character this guy had in chat kind of became uh a real life character i don't know where he is uh he was on twitter for a little bit i was chit-chatting with him and he kind of disappeared and i just hope everything's all right with him but uh you know i owe the chat and the aka pad army a aka pad army created book and that's all going to be available in my on my website i haven't created a, a harry pen page yet but the whole idea is like you can kind of trace like everything about that that character and and go to the live streams and kind of you know like i guess my idea too is put together like like this harry pen movie of us creating you know the character and the book yeah, great Tarzan artist. Like, no joke. Um, probably the greatest Tarzan artist. Like, you, you kind of have to say. Um, even though, like, Tarzan is uh, an artist character. Uh, even, like, the Joe... Like, I don't know if you ever saw the Joe... The Joe Jusco... Jusco uh, trading card set. He did, like, two 60-card sets in the late 90s. Uh, I've been dying to get boxes... Boxes of those to do, like... Uh, like a box break. Uh, the box breaks are coming back too, by the way, guys. But yeah, Tarzan is, it's almost like, you know, like how like, um, like film, film noir or like, like a detective story is almost like a filmmaker's playground. And Tarzan is that for an artist. Like any artist that doesn't have their own point of view of Tarzan or crave to draw that character uh it's hard to trust them it really is uh i remember there was one time too like way back i forget i was talking with someone you know and i kind of came up with the idea that if like let's say i was running like a comic company and we had to like you know find talent and do all this stuff what i would do is i would have my uh, you know, like my talent script that people could kind of draw from. I it would literally be Tarzan in the jungle and then Tarzan in the city, but it would be Tarzan, you know. And I just think that character, and you know, again, two two separate settings, it all makes sense, uh, right? Like within the character, you, you're not stretching anything, and just knowing how old that character is by this point, it's just amazing that um you know like you, you can use it and then you can gauge you can really gauge an artist's uh, an artist's um ability just through tarzan guys and that these are some of the, the ideas and the concepts that 
I think are gone when it comes to modern comics. Uh, you know, and sometimes like I'll reach out to people that I see post and they'll be like looking for this or looking for that. And I'll be like, Hey, I'm like, uh, no problem. <laughs> like no problem. Like what do you need? Let's get it done. Uh, what's the deadline? Uh, I'm usually really fair when it comes to pricing too. Like, it, uh, sometimes depending on the project, I'll just, you know, I'll just say, fuck it. You know, like just give me the work. We'll work out pricing later. Uh, I've done that a lot, actually. I'm not afraid to, to do it. I'm not afraid to admit it. Uh, I don't think it diminishes me at all. I think it actually um, makes makes you better because if you if you agree to work at a rate that you're not like 100% with, if you do it in less time, you make more money. So the, the quicker you can sit down and just like – Fuck it. Like, no artist block, no writer block. You can just sit at this chair and do it. The better you are with that, the happier of an artist you will be in life. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Troll. Yeah, give me a second. Hold up here. We do have Super Strider. Where's he at? Hold up. Uh, hold up here. I, we gotta find them. Okay, I'm I'm going to kill that so we can see. We have Mondo Gecko, uh, Chrome Dome. Uh, I hate Chrome Dome. <laughs> I want to redo this one so bad. Uh, Mutagen Man, Muck Man. We do have Joe Eyeball. Oh, the villain guy from Toxic Crusaders. So a lot of Turtle Soup Thursday. Just just so we're clear. Is going to incorporate the 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 other properties inspired by the turtles, uh, Samurai Michelangelo, I think from Turtles Three. Turtles Three. Oh, forget this guy's name. This is what the final years of the original show. This was the alien guy, Space Usagi, piece of face. Um, Smug Bug. What was it? What's this guy's name? Uh, bug, smoke bug, bed bug. Oh my god, brain fart. Uh, rat king, general trag. Um, these are blank. So, like the mini characters that come with um, some of the okay, so that's what I have left. Hey, hold up here, guys. Uh, hold up here. That uh, did I lose one? I, there's no way I lost one. Let me get the other stack. All right, hold up, guys. Baxter Stockman, Krang, Raphael, Mountie Moose, upcoming ones. Rise of April, uh, Wingnut, Ground Truck, Samurai Leo. Oh, there he is. Super Shredder. It's a twin shot, right? Uh, I just wanted to go crazy with, with the texture. I just wanted him... I just wanted, like, the idea of a tetanus shot. Like, you would get a tet tetanus shot if this guy touched you. And if you touched him, just wanted... Like, you, you would get caught. Not, not sliced. Like, you would get caught in the... You know, and it would just drag. And then um, right, this is another guy from the later series. But, yeah, so this is what I mean by, like, the mini characters. This is Screw Loose. Uh, that's Joe Eyeball. Then we have Gecko uh, or Genghis, Toxic, uh, foot, foot Soldier. And, I, and, you know, like, I don't like the eyes for the Foot Soldier, but I think the form's there. I don't know. Uh, leather fa uh, Leatherhead. Uh, the true fifth turtle, the real number five, slash, uh, one of my favorites, one of my absolute favorites. I've never watched any of the cartoons with this guy in it, but this is Meat Sweats. Absolute original awesome character, like beyond awesome great name. Michael Bay, Donatello. And it's not really just Michael Bay. You know, like we have to remember these movies had other directors. Michael, it was just Michael Bay's. 
Michael Bay's production company. Yeah, so the goal is to really clear out the rest of this stack. So we don't have too many, right? We don't have too many. But we got some little guys for the minis. I've been saving this square one for, like, Spongebob. <laughs> got to do Spongebob, guys. You guys got me talking all freaking night. I haven't even put down any color yet. <gasps> yeah, I know. Awesome Super Shredder. Dude, Super, Sh Super Shredder. Like, how... <laughs> I I I get... Right? How... how What happens to him at the end of Secret of These, right? The the whole... Everything collapses on them, right? The uh, They're they're at the docks. At the, the river docks. And the, the river docks collapse onto them. Does he bust out of that? Like, does his arm come up at, at the end of that? I just don't understand how you, you have Super Shredder. Put that effort in everything. Like, put him in the next movie. Put, put him in Turtles 3. You do the live-action TV show. Put him in. You do the, uh, the Turtles on tour. Put him in there. I don't know why, man. Like, people's egos get, get in the way sometimes. Where it, they just want their stuff. I think that's what you're seeing with, with the James Gunn stuff. Like, that's all ego. I know. I, I've i been wanting to do something with that, by the way. Like, artwork-wise. I'm doing, like, a, like an Outsiders, NWO, kind of like Kevin Nash, like, mashup. That, that's been in, in, on the tip of my brain for a long time now. Just going through some of those turtle drawings too, uh, or those previous turtle supers. Uh, just like, geez, like now, like I spend so much time coloring now. I used to crank them out in one hour, like that was realistically what what I could do. And now it's, uh, you know, they are multiple hours because I want more out of it. I just want more from the. Uh, yeah, you know, like the overall look of the um, cardboard pizza, we'll say. So some of the like some of this is already too light. Right? Like some of this is already too light. And I, I gauge a lot of how things come up on camera when I, when I do them. Like I, you know, like they, they have to be somewhat visual like you have to be able to present the ideas uh it's hard for me to do that if you guys can't see them so right now i'm looking for a decent orange and i think we got a little bit of a brown here not so much orange but i'll take it because it actually grips the paper the cardboard pretty nice cardboard's paper but I call it cardboard. Yeah, but that's just one of those awesome like pieces of, of trivia. The the whole Kevin Nash thing. Like or like it's almost like should the mashup picture be Kevin Nash and um that wizard dude, like when he premiered in WCW. Right, like wasn't he like the, the Wizard of Oz? It was something like that. But dude, like that's the stuff. You know what, dude? Guys, we're we're gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. We're we're gonna make that mashup piece. We're gonna do Kevin Nash. Like, I guess like should he We'll we'll do it a certain way. We'll do it like so you, you can tell it's Kevin Nash as Super Shredder, and then we'll do the uh, Oz. Like we'll we'll do a cool cool pose. Yeah, so we're already forty minutes in, guys. I'm just going to take this as far as I can tonight. And, uh, you know, might have to complete some of it off camera. Or, like, I kind of was debating, because with all the January stuff, 
I really like the idea of just again, like, um, like kind of like you know, like plowing away on Stingray, plowing away at that do-it-yourself uh, comic book, but at the same time, doing like makeup sessions where it's just me kind of toggling between all the different prompts and all the different pages and kind of like just working in a uh you know like a good range of, of uh, materials and stuff too meaning like uh, you know with stain worry like i could be lettering for a little bit then i could be just working on paneling and stuff like that and i'm thinking about doing something similar for here where I just do like a Turtle Soup Thursday makeup session. So I try and give a little bit of insight on the material side of the process. And the big thing with uh, colored pencils is always uh, you got to be patient, you got to build up your layers. Try and put down your mediums. Like for example, like if, if this was red, uh, we 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 might want to do the undertone with the red with like uh like an orange, and then hit it with the red, and then go over it with with the yellow, and that's just kind of like how some of the the blending works. But yeah, you know, with blues, you can kind of range up blues the the same way. Like get get the spectrum there and then you know kind of play and be aggressive with colors you're using for highlights or shadowing so like for example like purple is always uh your one of your go-to colors just for general shadowing period regardless if something's blue or, or purple like you know like you can add purple to nearly anything to shade it and it will it will change like you know like your your piece your drawing will it de will develop another look and it'll most likely will be very pleasing to the eyeball and that's really all always what you want to do you want to trick the eye to believe something's there you also want to please the eye with color and movement and it's that simple baseline that you again uh it's i call those precepts if you commit yourself to precepts and, and in the commercial art world uh that's kind of what your art director does like your art director's going to kind of lay out some of your yes and no's and you know what, what which is great to have because it will make you better make the work better it will guide you and it's also uh, a little bit of solace for the client. Like the client needs to have confidence that we're moving in a certain direction that's uh, calculated, that's uh, thought out. So giving yourself your own art direction is extremely valuable. And you have to do it. You know, some art directors, I used to work with one of them, uh, they they micromanage. Some of them micromanage. Some of them don't, because uh, usually if if they're busy, <laughs> like if they're busy and if they trust you, they you get a shot at doing like the first round of work. And if you guys are in like a good communication level, usually um, you know it's all all systems are go at that point. Yeah, in the Royal Rumble, yeah, Turtles versus Classic W. So who would be WCW? Like Classic would be Ric Flair, Sting, Lex Luger. Um, I would love to do, I guess like, yeah, not so much Classic, but maybe um, Mortis, if you guys remember Mortis, Sub-Zero, Sting. And, you know, like kind of like four characters, just like four like characters that look like that they would be rivals to the uh, turtles. I don't know who that fourth one would be though. I would have to uh, research it. I mean, I guess like Ric Flair though. Jeez, like Ric Flair is so 
Ric Flair, the internet and the memes and TikTok has permanently made Ric Flair like the the wrestler. Like it's insane uh, how much popularity he has grown just out of the TikTok. But I love it though. You know, like all, all of this Ric Flair love is just awesome. And like, what's his? Do we know his number? Because right, and I I don't blame him. He disputes WC uh, WWF's um, like almost like claim or the way how they define his championships. But Ric Flair, like, the, what what's he seventeen? You know, he's he's well over seventeen. He's like in the twenties. He's like twenty five or twenty six. If you really go through his his history. Uh, same with AJ Styles. Like AJ Styles might be the most decorated wrestler of the modern day, and I just I don't understand how he doesn't get how AJ Styles doesn't get another run in modern day WWE. It's it's just it's like I would say AJ Styles and uh, Seth Rollins. Like I just don't under, those guys. They're so good. They're good at every aspect, and it just seems like the WCW, uh, the WWF champions now, uh, are really kind of like they just go for Superman, like guys that are just comic book level. And yeah, in in a way, it's always been like that. I mean, like honestly, guy, like growing up, like outside of Shawn Michaels, like Bret Hart, you know, and Bret Hart to me always was. I always felt like Bret Hart was overrated. Um, not saying he he's, he doesn't have good stuff. I mean his his heel storyline when it was like him, um, you know, when they were like the the angry Canadians and they would could just cut these promos <laughs> like ripping up America. But it was him and uh, who's uh, Brian Pillman and when they were kind of during the um, like the gang wars storyline. Where there was like there was a million fractions in WWF WWE. I think that's when he was at his best. When he was a heel, when they were like the angry Canadians with Jim Neidhart and British Bulldog, dude. They that was awesome though. But up until then, uh yeah, like pass on Bret Hart. And then, like, I guess outside of um, the girl, right? Like, everyone, every heart of the heart, like, dynasty just failed in WWE. Isn't that funny? Except for the girl. And you're just like, how? Like, how is that possible? Like, how does every single heart wrestler fail in WWE? I want to know that. You guys got it. Sorry, I'm just going on and on here. Yeah, Jake. The, you know what? Jake the Snake would be awesome, dude. Like, it just as a Turtles mashup. A thousand percent, dude. Jake the Snake. Up uh, is did, did he pass away? Jeez, I forget. I, I, I forget. But he would be amazing. Just because he he is like a little bit of like that real life too. Like he kind of eventually uh, lived his heel gimmick. And I kind of want to say that like, do people not care about what wrestlers are and like have, you know, like kind of have ailments or. Technically, you're probably on like life support or on some level. I just feel like everyone's moved on from from that. Where one time it's just like everyone was like learning about uh, Scott Hall, Ric Flair, like it was almost like monetized, and now it's just like no one cares. It's that's sad, actually, right? Because I think we just someone else just passed away. I can talk wrestling. Oh, you got oh, you guys want to see something? 
Hold it up here. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Speaking of Ric Flair. All right. So check this out. So I always, I always, whenever I'm in like an antique store, a salvage shop, Philly has a lot of salvage stores, or um, like a used bookshop. I always grab the wrestling. So anything like the Howard Stern stuff, because I found what, what I'm about to show you, I found some of that. But there's there are certain books that had like really big tours and you know, like thousands of people showing up at some of these signings, and there's a lot of autograph books in circulation. So this book, like it wasn't 20. Uh all their hardbacks were like four or five bucks. But here we go. Yeah, 16 times. But yeah, signed by Ric Flair. You know, so you always look at the wrestling biographies because the promotion tours for these were insane. And WWE and WWF was so good, again, at monetizing it. They made events out of some of these signings. Uh, yeah, so I always check them out. So even like with some of some of these here, some of this line work, I am going to have to go back and darken some of it up. So the video dropped tomorrow also, if you guys want me to tease that. If you guys need to know anything, like if you have any questions about like what future streams, future like now, like we have both of the art of um, <laughs> the art of the MCU Paul Rudd. It's hard for me to address Paul Rudd as a superhero, but we got Quantumania coming out. There's two art of Ant Man books. Uh, you know, I'm gonna be doing streams on those where I just do like a blind flip through, especially with that second one. I I have the second one. I've never cracked it open. I like doing that stuff live. Uh, I just I, I I'm really into documenting my initial reactions to, to some things. I don't know why, but I also have to refamiliar familiarize myself with the uh, Ant Man and the Wasp movie. So a little bit of a delay there with that one, but uh, yeah, I mean if you guys have ideas for things and stuff you want to see, the video one of the videos dropping tomorrow is Black History Month. But we're gonna be doing the Black Racer, uh, Jack Kirby creation from the from New Gods issue three, and it's tech. I mean, the strong opinion on that is the Black Racer is better than Silver Surfer, and I know that's blasphemy when it comes to some of the comic book circles. But eh, and yeah, I kind of believe it. He has such a good origin, such a good character. Way more interesting and relatable than Silver Surfer, by the way. Like, way more. Where you kind of, once you think about it, it's hard to uh, back it up. Like, it really is. I think now, like, they could, like, in, in a Flashpoint Lake movie, you could introduce a character like the black racer and you know just almost like have him in every single dc movie period like every single one he, uh, he's that big of a character he's that powerful cool you know give him like a little bit of a, of a design update like you know the bells and whistles when it comes to, to that stuff give give him some time put some effort into his appearance so, like, th those are things. And then we're doing Black History Month Punisher with the most outrageous Punisher storyline ever. Uh, I just reread two issues of that today. And it, I'm not joking. It blew me, it just blew me away. And then that's going to transition into Punisher number nine. The, the uh, volume, volume 13, by the way, Punisher number nine. 
if we're going to go from volume two, <laughs> the first monthly, to volume 13. So it's just like that. Some some of this stuff is a lot like my Wildstorm Wednesdays. Uh, we're talking long form study, uh, long form analysis. Uh, anything I just mentioned time wise can get bumped because of if something new drops with the Marvel Cinematic Universe or something new with uh, the DC Universe or James Gunn. And, yeah, I kind of, I want to drop a video tonight because so much has come out now by Quantumania. Uh, dude, I don't know. That move, that, that, there are spoilers. Like, I, I won't talk about it now, but in the, the, that video, I'm definitely going to be dropping uh, spoilers because uh, I, I cannot believe the uh, direction that they chose with Quantumania. Like, with the, the actual things that are happening. See what I mean by, like, popping in purple? I wish Win Windblock was here. He's been <laughs> he's been uh, trying to get me to drop purple in some of my uh, stuff here for... <laughs> he's He popped into a couple sessions. He was mentioning purple, and I wasn't quite on purple yet. <laughs> Hopefully he watches the replay. Yeah, I'm reading Blood Strike 3. Yeah, car. Yeah, dude. Dude, you know what? Uh, yeah, troll. Give me a second. Let me. I gotta grab something from Carl. Uh, cause I this this I wasn't even aware of until recently. So th this is my immediate current reading baby stack. Uh, ju I just have to say, the new Shadowhawk is so masterful. And this nearly, like, I almost just want to hit eBay, buy a whole run of this, and just take my time absorbing it because I never knew Shadowhawk was, like, this good. But then again, we do, as I, as I highlighted in the... um. The, the whole video, Kurt Busiak wrote this, and it is it's just, it's phenomenal it's the best Shadow the Hawk has ever been and ever will be uh, the McFarlane Daredevil issue uh, this is a toy edition <laughs> I didn't realize that when I bought it, but I paid like a dollar something for it um, so I'm 50-50 on presenting it because it's not the official official, but uh, I'm anxious Black Racer, this this drops tomorrow. But then we have this, guys. So before the original Battlestar Galactica was like the all the special effects guys from Star Wars needed to stay together and work because again the uh, the special effects industry wasn't like a boom town, but they had to keep industrial light and magic working and in business and and you know that's a lot of how Battlestar Galactica came about. But it was. It made for TV movie. It was huge. Went into a series just like V, The Visitors, and it's fantastic. The original Battlestar Galactica is fantastic. The up the the update the remake is the best science fiction show ever. Enough of that though. But we have Carl here, troll. Carl right here, and I read this today. And this, this kind of picks up. This is like the, the next episode of the uh, series. And like the ships that Carl drew, I mean, it, it's phenomenal. It really is. Uh, this is the best work he's done with Extreme or Maximum Press or Rob Liefeld. It really is. The variety of things that he has to draw here is insane. And... I don't know. I think that this is like a top level book. I would say this book right here outside of Dark Empire looked better than any of the 
Dark Horse Star Wars books at the time. You guys got me talking too much tonight. My co-host said, shout out. What, what do you mean by that, Devil Flyer? <laughs> what do you mean by that? I I want Shadowhawk 2 is one of the things I found. Um, I did a box break of these image comic trading cards by Tops. Uh like like a good year ago. And when I was going through that, you know, it was like it was basically stuff from like all the founders. It was like it might have been like image united trading card set or something. And during that stream, there were so many people into Shadowhawk. Like, people were more into Sh those Shadowhawk cards than the Spawn ones, than the Savage Dragon ones, than the than the, the Young Blood, and so on and, and so forth. Shadowhawk has resonated. And, you know, I think kind of like, you know, like in sports where if you don't, they say, like, if you don't put a team away, they'll they'll come back. Like, so a lot of times, like when you're watching football or basketball, you'll see teams get these leads and they just, they don't put teams away and things start to crumble. And, uh, you know, you have comebacks and, and, and meltdowns and, and all, all, all these like hubris sports like things happen. And trust me, guys, I, I absolutely love sports. I watch as, as much sports as I can. I, I love talking sports, but Shadowhawk is that dude like Shadowhawk like Shadowhawk wasn't put to bed like he wasn't he wasn't like shot down and he just stayed there and people I think more and more people found those issues and that character and the look like the overall design and maybe connect a little bit more with those issues than, than they would spawn because you know, Shadowhawk was very grounded in a level of reality. I'll say that more than any of those image books. Like he kind of had real world problems. I think it's awesome, by the way. I think it. Uh, I love seeing stuff like that come to fruition. It's like, you know, like it's like I'm back, bitch. Oh my channel, dude! What um? If you guys want to uh, do something, let me know, Devil. I mean, if you <laughs> if that dude's name is Shadowhawk, I want I definitely want to stream and hang out with with you guys. <laughs> I mean, we could do a lot like this, or I can have you guys on if if, if that's something you want to do, and uh. Yeah, I know a lot of times, like, I would have all of my, like, everyone that pops in eventually on camera with me, but a lot of people are very shy. So, I kind of don't, like, I always used to DM and, like, kind of, like, bug people, and I think people would be nice and kind of give me, like, kind of, like, yes me to death and stuff like that, but I kind of slowed down with it, and... That was kind of a little bit of one of my New Year resolutions, too, was to uh, do more collab streams. Even though, like, a few years ago, I was very heavy on it, it just kind of, uh, it just lost momentum. Or I lost the momentum to, to do it. A lot, of, uh, a lot of the back and forth with the scheduling and a lot of my availability, though, can go from... Like, I can do it to, I have to handle this. Like, there was something else that came up. And I know that sucks. And it's frustrating. So, I kind of, I also wanted to spare people that. Yeah, big image guy. Yeah, look, there's, there's uh, a couple of phases. I mean, there's, there's, um... A couple errors, even in the first few years of Image. Um, you know, like, it, there's... It's not just... It's not cookie-cutter. It's really not. There's 
there's a lot of nuance to understanding image from inception founding uh and in my view their their break their crumbling their uh betrayal almost of everything that they were kind of built for and you can kind of go through the creators and what some of the the, the infighting and the gripes were and the different success stories from image and yeah you know, like there's so many different angles like different takes and i think that's a little bit too of how it resonated because it's so conversational and it's like no different than like the formation and history of a uh, sports league you know where kind of like the history of the teams is as interesting as the teams themselves and their players sometimes even more So I guess we should give him like a red mouth, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. You guys stream every day. Yeah. Um, can you just hit me up on the Twitter, the Twitter, just so, just so I can kind of, I check, look, I'm, I don't have it. In, 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 in my Moleskine book, I have uh, <laughs> check messages every single day. Yeah, first three, yeah, and you know what, too? The first three years is really it. Um, you're pushing image at year four. Your uh, image is already changing drastically by year four. Okay, thank you, thank you. I love you guys are you guys are beyond great. I really like thank you guys. Well, I just I want to again like just connect, I want to push things further. I want to inspire. I just I don't I I don't hear that enough, by the way. And I kind of feel like I'm being hokey when I say I want to inspire people, but I get I'm not joking. I get so excited when I like just sit down and I hit that live button. And yeah, yeah, I'm on their aka pad. So one second here. I can show you. Right here, Peter A. DeLuca, a.k.a. P.A.D. But, yeah, yeah, like, I really do. Like, I want to, like, get out there and reach people. And I don't know. Like, I just feel like, yeah, like, at one time, I think everybody was motivated by that like every every kind of like creator or someone like that that had that type of energy about them like jack kirby probably said that one time the stan lee and walt disney like you kind of want to inspire people that's it's a noble like notion yeah i don't think it's egotistical or like anything like that and even though i'm sure some of it can come off that way And it's not easy. It's not easy to try and do a video every day. I'm behind on even me, some of my crowdfunding, some of my other projects that, that I've agreed to with other people. Like, you know, like I'm always behind. Uh, you know, we do work here in the house of PAD. We have a absolute high demand full-time job. Like it's beyond full-time. Uh, you know, but we, we balance everything. We juggle, uh, we maintain our, our relationships and our families and our wives and our girlfriends and our pets. Like you, you juggle all that, but you have to. Here we go. I think that, that was you right, right now. We let's verify. Oh, maybe not. I'm in my. Oh, okay. 
That's the file. Why am I not notified with that? You know, I don't, uh, some of these notifications, why don't I see, I can't say, I was notified of that, but it's not in the app. Like, maybe I should just close it. Twitter's been funny, though. It really has. But it's software, and software is buggy. Cool. We'll get it done. We'll get it again. <laughs> we will. Yeah, um, four and five is a little bit tricky, but I mean, I think I could make it, believe it or not, I think I could make it work. Um, I try and when I can kind of, when like my world has calmed down, uh, you know, I've done streams as early as three o'clock. I've done streams like even super early in the morning. Uh, the last couple of days I've been waking up actually at five to stream around six or seven and guess what like you know i get some of those work calls and those work emails coming in and i kind of jump on stuff um my goal <laughs> during the business day whenever i jump on something is to get it done so i can do stuff with like you guys <laughs> like i'm so single-minded it's not even funny but uh I, I think I can make it work. Let's just kind of, again, like, let's just start the process. Let's start it. We're trying to make the mouth kind of go from a little dark to a little bit bright in the middle. Trying to get that to kind of come off a certain way. These five below colored pencils freaking work though they grip the corrugation of the cardboard so nicely i think you guys can kind of see some of that yeah and i will definitely uh devil i will definitely like go through your stuff and comb it uh anyone that I kind of know that, you know, like when I see notifications or whatever, I try and like pop in just to say hello. Um, you know, like, you know, promote to. It's just like, again, like that's what we all have to do together. We all kind of have to get on that promo train. I I kind of like even one of my, I think my video today or the other day, I don't know. I was doing a video on something and I kind of went on this little bit of a tangent on, uh, you know, like we're kind of like, again, we're so obsessed with these other things, right? Like we're obsessed with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're obsessed with the DC Universe already. We're obsessed with Star Wars. And, you know, like we're just not taking the time to promote new things. Like new things that we're discovering. We're not, we're not trying to discover new things and it's so frustrating and i'm even guilty of it but those videos get like nothing like even the people it, like i can pick an independent comic do a whole video on it and the, the creator doesn't even like leave a comment <laughs> i don't know i hate it can't do it guys you know but i you have to do it it's such a weird balance but we kind of have to build up new properties. We have to build up new voices. We have to build up new personalities. And I think part of that too is like you have to have the mindset that you're in, uh, realistically, you're in a 10-year battle. It's going to take you 10 plus years, not just on YouTube, but like kind of on social media in general to build it up and to do it. And I think that... Uh, like scares people off once things don't happen in year one or year two. And I say the, the hell with it, you know, like go through my history. Th this is one of the reasons why like we're all committed to AKA pad.com, but go, go, go through my history and look, look at the amount of work I put into all of it. The consistency, uh, the love and look at my returns. Like they're 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 not even there. 
But the thing is, though, it's like you kind of have to also stick to things to get good, to get better, to develop an eye. Same as drawing. Like, you have to develop an eye and a nose of what's good and what's not and why. You know, and, and that's tough to de determine, especially if you're in the grind. If you're in the regular grind of doing work, you it's, you don't see the forest through the trees. You just, that's not going to happen. But it needs to. You have to find a way to, to make that happen. Well, we're getting there with this one at least, right? I kind of want some of this to be more translucent. Like a little bit more translucent. We got to put some red through there. There we go. All right. Yeah, dude, uh, troll, dude, thank you, like, you know, again, thank you for even noticing and saying that. Look, uh, that philosophy, too, is also echoed in my comic book discussions. Uh, you know, I just feel like, you know, like, again, dude, like, I had to pay for this. Like, you know, I purged my entire collection two, three years, like, more than three years ago at this point. Uh, I, I had a stack of these, you know, we used to be able to buy new gods, anything in dollar bins for 20, 30 years. Okay. I, I had so many new God issues. It wasn't even funny. Uh, Eternals, Silver Star. These, these were a lot of the Jack Kirby books you could buy endlessly. Jack Kirby, Black Panther. You could just, you could buy wads of it, like wads. But I feel like. Um, there's something true about having uh, having something physical when you, when you discuss it, because yeah, you know, I want I want you guys to know that you know, like I smelled the paper, like I went through the process of of learning about this character, and you know, I treat comics as one offs too. Uh, I, at this point in my life, I don't care about New Gods one or two. I just don't. I care about this one though. So I think that's interesting. You know, like I, I think there's something there. I think there there's a uh you know, like not honesty, but there there there's a truth. Maybe a weekend. Um yeah, dude, like weekends, uh not this weekend for sure, because uh if you haven't heard, it's the effing Super Bowl. <laughs> I'm in Philly and I'm probably going to uh be out all night and then uh, probably into the early Monday morning. And then we're going to have a, you know, we got to do the parade. But this weekend it for sure is going to be nuts. But always, always, again, like let's just start the process. Let's be in touch with one another. Okay, excellent. Okay. Looks so like, thank you, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, these pencils are five below pencils. I bought these at five below. Okay. Now, some of the other ones you see, these are spectra color. These are the greatest colored pencils ever made. They've been discontinued for probably 10 years now. I had a supply of them. Uh, I'm at the very end of the supply. I'm, I'm probably going to have to try and buy a little bit more off of e eBay. And the, the other brand is uh, Prismacolor. As you guys know, Prismacolor from the, the markers. Uh, the wax content is loose enough. Not the wax is not as good as Spectra. It's not. These two are not even close. But uh, I try and you know find a manufacturer that's close to this level of. It's like I say loose. I mean soft. Um, the five below ones are great because they're they're actually rigid. 
their um, their their tough marker, uh, their tough pencils, which is good because you can, you can grind out some of the the blending. You can kind of have a little bit tougher tougher touch, I'll say. But let's get into the uh, fun. Presto, these are uh, they're pretty much graffiti pens. These write on anything. These write on anything. So, but and when they're new, um, they're awesome. But this is how we do our highlights. So, like, you kind of see, you see, like, instantly. You just see, like, the, uh, like, it just, there's a level of life that kind of pops out of it. going to give his slime a little bit more juice we'll call it normally i i kind of don't highlight the slime so much but i just think you know since this guy's like inspired by uh aliens alien uh, i'm not sure how you reference that uh but since he's inspired by alien uh you know let's let's give his slime a little bit a little bit extra here we go Yeah, and as as I was saying earlier too, how uh, you know aggressive I've been trying to kind of as aggressively as I've been trying to nail down like my blacks better. Uh, I've been trying to do the same with with my highlights, like again, like kind of working in both directions, working polar opposites from from one another. But yeah, just trying to get my highlights better. Um, just so again, like things kind of, I, I, I did, geez, I'm losing my, uh, train of thought there. Like, you know, like the, you try and do two things. You try and do realistic and fantasy. And you, again, you want to find that balance. Um, part of that b balance is your voice. It's what your perspective is. Um, that comes from just the idea that. It's your perception. It's how you are seeing it. That, uh, I'll tell you right now, you won't find in any FN art book at all. Uh, no instructor will tell you that or describe it in that exact same way. But you, you get it here. You get it with AKA pad. But yeah, like it, the, the straight up idea is to Again, trick the eye. You trick the brain in thinking something is real that does, doesn't even exist. You know, and a lot of times these drawings, this artwork feels more real than the real world. And if you have to believe that's what you're doing. If you don't believe that's what you're doing, it makes it so much more difficult to put the time into it. It just makes it a little bit more impossible. It makes the task feel a little bit more daunting. And you want to, again, uh, figure out the process so you can kind of duplicate it. But it's your own process. Like what works for you on the drawing table 
because it doesn't work for everyone. And that's by design. That's just the way it works. Well, I feel like we're somewhere at least with this guy, right? I mean, I'm I'm a little bit relieved. I get so nervous when I start these. I really do. Awesome. Sorry, I'm just looking at I'm looking at my screen. So, like one of my tricks, and this is another benefit from live streaming, is I get to like I'm so close here, but when I look at my screen, which is this way, uh, it creates enough of that distance where again, like from from my perspective, it's this, right? When I look at the screen, it's almost like this big. So I'm getting that that perfect amount of distance to really see how well some of the highlights are working, and it's it's different. It, it is a difference maker. So again, uh, valuable to live stream sometimes when you're doing work. This is also, it's like so therapeutic when you can just kind of drift off.
right. I think I need a little bit of dis distance from this, but so definitely coming up, I'm probably going to do, yeah, like a makeup stream for this. Not makeup, but like a touch-up stream where I just go through like a pile of these and I just work on different portions. Uh, we got more January. We got comic book production artwork coming up. Uh, if I get roped into a Zoom call tomorrow morning, I'll probably be doing, uh, I'll do my silent drawing. <laughs> where I just I'm on mute, but I'll be live working on whatever. Uh, usually it's whatever on, is on the top of my table at the time. But AKA Patters, holy shit, I love you guys. Great hangout session. Um, it kind of makes me want to you know tune in at, at ten o'clock every night, right? I mean, ten o'clock might be the time. We'll keep going though, rock and roll.